Hi, this is Kuvin Kell, champion of free market account, uh, free markets and um, Austrian economics. Uh, my favorite economics class that I took in uh, in college was industrial organization. In fact, it was my uh, the favorite class that I took throughout my whole college career. Uh, that had to deal with uh, looking at um, from a, a consumer perspective at uh, various um, uh, monopolies throughout his, uh, modern history and oligopolies and um, such as like Standard Oil was a monopoly owned by Rockefeller until it was broken up. It took him 20 years. The Sherman Act was um, was put into made into law I think in the 1890s and it took about 20 years for them to actually be able to break up the monopoly that was Standard Oil. Um, it was a very interesting class. Uh, we also got into cartels and I'm going to uh, leave a... Uh, an oligopoly is a um, an industry uh, where we have like five or less companies competing for your business. So when we have five or less companies in control of a, of a total industry, they can get together and collude and price fix and price gouge the, um, you the consumer. So the idea was that um, uh, oligopolies they're not a monopoly, which is uh, one company. There, uh, but uh, because there's only there's only a few amount of them, uh, they should they must be monitored to prevent price gouging. Um, the uh, the NCAA, National Collegiate Athletics Association, is a cartel. They kind of just make their own rules up. And uh, their rules are a very, very bad um, restriction on free market economies. The various players that colleges recruit uh, to play, in particular, to play the big, big money sports. Right, that draws in millions and millions of dollars of revenue into the uh, universities and colleges across America. Um, those universities and colleges would not be making that kind of money if if the players uh, weren't there to play the game for them. Now they get uh, free rides. Is I guess what's um. Some people refer to it as um, where they don't have to pay tuition or room and board or anything like that. But um, still, the, the college players aren't paid a, a, a single dime. They're legally not um, not paid anything by the university at, or college. And when that is broken by the um, by the University of College and found out uh, the NCAA can like um, you know ban that put penal measures on the uh, on the academic institution but that is all really just an infringement on free market economies um, in a free market economy the players would be paid according to what the market says not according to what the rules of the cartel known as the NCAA says. So if we, uh, I live in Syracuse, Syracuse University is huge, huge basketball program. If the universities were allowed to pay their, their students for their performance because their, their, their athletic performance because they draw in millions, um, uh, we, um, The, uh, the students might, um, well, they would make 
I don't know. It, it depends on what the free market would say. Like maybe tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars. You know, in a year's time. And uh, it's the NCAA that um, that bans this from uh, from occurring. And uh, I think it should be left up to universities. I got an Irene update from National Grid. Never really even hit this area. Uh, the, uh, it should be left up to uh, it, it should be left up to the universities uh, and the colleges whether or not they want to pay their players and how much they want to pay them because the players are what's drawing in all those all, all that revenue. Um, so that's what a free market economist should say with regards to this situation. And um, uh, I know it, it may seem controversial in uh, my position on this matter, but I uh, might want to try to think outside the box on this one and to, uh, to what I'm saying here. Okay. Uh, think about it and have a nice day. Bye.